down for the opportunity. One, I didn't know anyone, like Chris said. If, if any of you guys uh, aren't from the area that you're in right now, show of hands, are you guys from uh, different areas? Anybody move for the opportunity? Who's not from Calgary? Yeah, actually, we had, uh, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Michael Gordon, Shane Hurdle, and Matt Cook were all personally recruited and all moved from Saskatchewan specifically for this opportunity and had to quit their job and move here not knowing anybody to start here. So we've got quite a few people that are in the same, same spot as Southern, for sure. Awesome. So I realized that right away I wasn't going to know a lot of people. Two, I was brand new in the company. I didn't have extra money to pump into recruiters right so all i knew is i was seeing people and everybody needs this opportunity because if david carpenter didn't reach out to me i want to be in this position so i'm forever grateful and i want to share the same opportunity with everybody else right so like i said i moved across the country i realized that it was a two-in-one situation i was seeing people for activity might as well see them to recruit as well just like we collect referrals we can collect recruits okay we see people every single day and the best part about this guys it's duplicatable um Puffing a lot of money into recruiters isn't necessarily duplicatable for the newest person. That's why we care about this, the newest person. Personally, recruiting from social media takes practice. It's not necessarily duplicatable right away for the newest person. Um, so what I do before I go into a house, before I start the role play, is I set goals before every single house to remind myself I need to go in for recruits. Okay? Sorry, just got a phone call. Uh, one, I said the number of referrals I want to collect. Two, number of referrals I want to book from the home. But three, number of recruits. So I set these goals not even worrying about if I make the sale or not because I don't want to go for the sale if I haven't hit these three categories yet. Okay? Before every single home, I set that goal. And then the other ones would be, you know, protect the family, 1,200 ALP per sale, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so when I go in, it's just like a normal warm-up, guys. You don't want to do anything different because if you try to do something different, you're going to feel weird and you're going to have a weird vibe coming up. Uh, just be you, right? Ask normal questions like you would in a warm-up. So, hey, how's it going? Where do you work? Do you like it? Right? Does it pay well? Oh, I've been in that same situation. I, and then emphasize with them, right? Uh, so really quick, in the front row, uh, blue shirt. Yes. You're going to be my, uh, my role play, okay? Okay. Awesome. So what's your name? Ben. Ben? Yes. Great to meet you, Ben. So nice you. uh, you're my client. We're talking right now. You can choose wherever you want to work, and we'll go from there. Okay. So, yeah, Ben, uh, you said you've been in the area a while. What is it, again, you do for work? Uh, I do construction. Construction. Oh, you're a hard worker. That's pretty awesome. Are you in the management, or are you just uh, a normal employee? Labor. Labor? Awesome, man. I respect that. It's Well, at least uh, down here in Phoenix, it's hot. So that, that's a hard job. Hopefully it pays well, yeah. Uh, well, so obviously I'm not talking about you then. It sounds like you love your job. You probably don't want to leave construction. I'm assuming you want to retire from that, right? Yeah. But fortunately, people surround themselves with people like themselves. Okay, so you must have friends who are also hardworking. But more importantly, Ben, I bet they want to make more money, probably get into management and uh, retire after 10 years of uh, being in a company. That sounds pretty great, right? Yep. Yeah. Right, so uh, we were talking earlier. You said you had a couple friends in the area. What were their names again? Who do you think would uh, want to make some more money? Off the head, I could think of Isaac, uh, Daniel, and Greg. Isaac, Daniel, and who was the last one? Greg. Craig? Awesome. Yeah, those sound like outstanding individuals. So, yeah, obviously, like I said, Ben, um, not really going for you. Jeez, I keep getting phone calls. Not really going for you because you said you love the spot you're in. Um, but those three, let's go ahead. Give me their numbers. I can reach out to them. I can get them an interview. Right, I can't promise them anything. Once they're in the interview, it's their time to shine. Um, but I bet they would really appreciate making that, uh, make more money, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So then after that, guys, if he's not showing interest, then it's good. I went for the indirect approach. I go for the indirect approach in every situation. Because if you sit down and you're talking directly to the person, you try to recruit them, they're going to feel pressure. And then the whole, even your sale, everything is going to go right down the chute. Does that make sense? So just don't make it about them. If it is a person that you really want, then they're going to jump at the opportunity right when you take that away from them. You start talking about their job. Like, ben, obviously, I'm not talking about you. You love construction. You probably never want to leave construction. But now your friends, you, you probably have some winning friends. Who do, who do you know out of your friends that wants to make more money, right? Then he's thinking, well, why isn't he asking me? I want to make more money. 
right? I don't want to retire from construction. I don't want to work in construction for the next 40 years, right? So always go the indirect approach, and it's a win-win. If you don't want the person you're talking to, great, you got their friends. If you do want the person they're talking to, great, you got their friends, and you can always fold back to the person you're talking to, okay? If he shows interest, shake him off, take it away again. If he's like, no, no, why are you talking about me? I want to make more money. I'm like, Ben, no, of course. You said you were happy. Remember, we just went over that. So I'm going to go with your friends, and then later in the, later in the conversation, right, I'm just like, you know what, Ben? I feel bad because you did show interest. I know you're happy, but you know, what the heck, what I can do is get you an interview too. But like I said, I can't promise you a job. I can promise you an interview. It's up to you to shine in the interview. Does that make sense, Ben? Yeah, absolutely. And they're like, yeah. Now they feel better about themselves. My closing ratio has actually gone up about 12% when I'm recruiting in the home because if I can make that connection with them, they already know I want to improve their lives. I'm there to help them, right? <laughs> They don't know that I'm getting anything from getting them a job. They don't know I'm getting overrides. They don't know anything. They just think I'm there to help them with that, right? Yeah. So I'm building that trust, building that relationship. And then I go on with the sale like we didn't even have that conversation. And at the end of everything, I come back to it and I recap. I get them in group right then. I set up the time and date. Okay? Uh, always use takeaways. Practice this before you go into a house because if you start to stutter and no one's gonna, you know, if you don't know the highlights of our job yet, then it's gonna be hard to recruit. The main ones that I always hit on, one is like, yeah, average makes 51,000 a year. It's a pretty good start, don't you think, Ben? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. The best part is though, man, on the job, the company lets us go on trips out of town for 10 days and we come back making no less than $5,000. It's incredible. Right away, that's road trip culture. I don't know what you guys have set up uh, there, Chris, but I know us down in Phoenix, um, we like road trips. We love road trips. We're about to go on a 36-day one right now, um, about 15 of us, and uh, to do something special. So what that does, which is a little side note, but when you're recruiting, you're already putting the road set or road trip mindset in them. Because right when they come to the interview, I've had four times now where they ask me after group, because they don't talk about road trips at group, they come to me, they're like, Southern, you said there's trips where you make 5,000 in 10 days. Why didn't they talk about that? I was like, that's actually crazy. That's, that's uh, awesome that you asked. That's only for my management team, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I go on and I talk to them about road trips. Day one, all they want to do is road trip. And Southern, can I just, yes, clarify, sir. Can I just clarify something? For you, for you guys, um, you know, we always focus on like going away for 10 days on a road trip so that you encompass two weekends. One of the ways that Southern just backs up exactly what he says is the fact that when they do road trips, correct me if I'm wrong, but they just basically send you out on a road trip with your leads and you don't come back until you have 10 grand ALP. That yep. way, even if it takes you a month, you still made five grand that week, month. But at the same time too, that way when you're personally recruiting, it's you always, you can go on trips and you always come back making five grand. Whether that's yep. a week, a weekend, two weeks, or however long it takes you, right? Yes, sir, yeah. So the reason we shoot for 10 days is because that's ideal. Nobody wants to be gone for longer than that. And when you set a goal, everyone's fast. They're going fast to hit that 10,000 AOP. Nobody wants to be the last guy that's holding everyone out you know, of the town, out of state, or I guess out of state for you guys, out of province, you know, whatever it is, um, away from their family. Everyone's grinding for that 10,000 AOP. And it's really easy to recruit and get into road trips when everyone's coming back to making really good money. Right? People are usually happier when they have this thing called money. I don't know how, why that works, but um, it does. Right? So I know Chris was actually up recruiting in the home, what, you said two this week, Chris? Yeah, Saturday I was out on a ride along with Kyla and I did two sits myself. And after talking to Southern down in Lake Tahoe, I tried to do exactly what he said. So first of all, it worked in both homes. But second of all, and both are coming in for career night next week, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, one of them just keeps talking to me about this opportunity because she's so engaged and she knows I'm doing her a favor instead of the other way around because I did what Southern said. I took it away. I asked her if she knows anybody looking for for full-time work because we're expanding and we've gotten the opportunity where we could actually take people out on field trips or they have the option of coming into the office for an information session to learn more about it. Who do you know that could be looking for you know a better career opportunity? And she said, well, what about me? I said, well, we already discussed. You're a cook, right? Probably five. 
food there, I'm sure, is really good because you're the cook? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, so I'm sure you're happy there. And she's like, well, yeah. And I said, okay, well, then who do you know that might be looking for full-time work? Because I know you're happy. And she's like, no, 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 listen. I just got my driver's license. I'm buying my car today. I was, I've been in direct sales before. I love it. What about me? And I'm like, well, we can get to that later. I was just wondering if there's anybody that you might know that's looking for full-time work. And by the end of it, we weren't even talking about the sale anymore, which, by the way, ended up just being automatic because she was floored with how much I was going to help her. So what I did was what Southern said, which is, listen, you know what, Elsa? I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to try to make some room to see if I can get you in for one of those uh, group information sessions. Or you can come for a ride along with me. What would you prefer? And she said, probably coming down to the office. I said, okay, perfect. I know you can't do it during the day, so I'll try to find a, an evening over the next two weeks. Just stay in touch with me so I can make, make sure. Now, who were the people that you were thinking of that might be perfect for this role? And so I ended up getting three more names plus her, right? Now, I'm not going to even call those three names because I got her coming in next week. I'd rather leave that for her, for her own personal recruits, to help her build her own agency within the next seven days. Right? But anything else on it? Yeah, no, that was incredible, Chris. I'm glad it's working out for you. Uh, one thing I want to hit on also is make sure you say, uh, we always under-promise, over-deliver in this, in this uh, job, right, in this opportunity. So don't tell them, yeah, I'm going to get you a job, because then if they don't get the job um, and you do sell them the policy, you just want to make sure you're always transparent with them. You're like, look, I can't promise you a job. It's up to you. Your time to shine. That way it's always back on them if they don't. Uh, follow through with it, right? That's just so um, there's a difference between them going for a job and you selling them a policy. But uh, other than that, guys, one thing, and Chris is probably going to do this, set up uh, incentives, like contests. Have a little contest in, uh, in your office. Who's going to get the most in-home recruits? Who's going to recruit the most in general? I promise you, the people that recruit the most in-home are going to probably win that contest, right? Plus, it helps you drive activity. I know me. I've always been fortunate, while well, even my team, uh, we can close decent, so we always had fewer appointments, but now we're like, you know, might as well get those appointments back. We're not even looking at the close. That's just going to happen. we got to grow. We're here to grow this business, right? Uh, really quick, though, do you guys have any questions that I can answer for you while I'm on here? Yeah, I sent one guy down to Arizona. He lives in uh, in Phoenix, and I told him to, to search for this opportunity. AI Elevate is operating that, and he's glad he told me that now. He's, he's reading his license over there. You might know him. Well, is he is he already with AIL? He say now he's been told to, to read his license there with AIL. Okay. Yeah, I, I talked to him over the phone. He's my friend. Okay. So, I'll, I'll give you Southern's information, contact info. Southern can follow up. Because yeah. that way, yeah. if there's any confusion or anything else like that, then Southern can use a 46th PR. <laughs> <laughs> Any, nice. any other questions? No? All right, Southern, thank you so much. Southern, we're gonna, you nailed it, buddy. Nailed yeah, it. we're going to put that right into action right away. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much, my friend. Yes, sir. Have a good one, guys. Later.